Now originally I had envisioned this video as a comparison between just the Cold Steel Cirque and the Gerber Strong Arm. Two knives I've been asked to do videos on for years. Okay, maybe like five to six people, let's, let's not oversell it. But I figured if I added a few more knives, the word Amazon, arrows in the thumb, then ranked them, that would make for a better video title and thumbnail. <laughs> uh, this video is complete trash. Anyway, with luck, it'll bring in new viewers to my knife cringe who say shit like this, or maybe this, or this. Now in today's posting, we're dealing with five wonderful knives. The Gerber Strongarm, the Felkneven S1, see I have grown as a reviewer, the Cold Steel SRK, the SE Laser Strike, and the Buck 119. Now you as a viewer might say, hey, you left my favorite knife out, asshole. Or, you should have picked knives the exact same price after tax. Or, made in USA only, bud. Or, only knives with blood grooves. Now that's fine and you're welcome to leave a nasty comment about it, but let me tell you why I chose these. First, they're all name brands. They're all around the same size-ish, you know, within an inch or two. And you encounter them a lot in stupid internet lists like this. The SC Laser Strike is the bit of the oddball here, maybe the SC4 or 5 would have been the more popular choice, but this is in that, you know, range. But, you know, I already had the laser strike, and uh, to be honest, all SCs are kind of thick. In addition, though, 4-6 to six inch mid-sized fixed blades are popular as general utility outdoor knives for your basic internet tabletop survivalists, culture war commandos, and backyard hair gel bros. And are all easy to obtain on other websites in case you'd like to slightly slow down the pace in which internet Walmart becomes our next form of government. Now as we edge ourselves toward that list, let's have a quick primer on my knife preferences to frame it. A daily carry for me is about 2.5 to 3.5 inches. I prefer the smaller knife when I know people will see me using it, like buttering my toast in the office. I'd use a tie light 6 inch for that boy. Now when I'm camping or at home, I prefer a 3 to 4 inch folding knife, which is logically a bit wider than an apple. I am mostly a folding knife bro, and my fixed blades are used for very specific things, like when I'm camping, and I know I'll be making a fire and thinking about the social situations I might be in at the campsite. And I prefer a real big fucker for processing firewood. I want something wider than the wood, so I have real estate to baton through it on either side of said log. You know, like a campsite, you have to use the wood that's there a lot of times. And, you know, those are already kind of split, but you got to split them a little further to break them down. Anyway, this knife will have an 8 to 12 inch blade and no one at any of the other campsites will ever talk to me. Which is fine because I hate people. Small fixed blades might be easier to clean and better for food prepping, but uh, you know I don't like batoning with them. And when you're talking about a knife that size, I prefer it to be a folder instead of a small fixed blade. A horizontal belt carry small fixed blade, a neck knife, or a pocket carry fixed blade are like phones on a belt clip while you're wearing socks with sandals. Unnecessary. So this list is kind of the minimum I'd want if you'd want to break down small pieces of wood or even food prep. It might make a good pack knife, although I'll be quite honest, I tend to only use my larger fixed blades for yard work and camping anymore, so these don't get a whole lot of use here. You know, everyone uses their knife a little differently and lives in different areas like different parts of southern Missouri. So I will be examining them, you know, with the hand feel, the price, the weight, the sheaths, the overall value, and then you will get mad by the way I rank them. Now if you're paring fine vegetables or peeling the skin off tomatoes, look elsewhere. None of them are fine slicers. If they're sharp though, they can cut vegetables just fine for camp food. Now it also occurs to me there are hunters who watch these videos, and some of them might be in the blade size range for dressing game. Fixed blades are easier to clean than folders, you know, in theory, but one problem I see with these is, save for the SE, none allow you to remove the handle scales. Sure, the synthetic handles are in good shape now, but what happens when the handles start to age and might have gaps between the tang and the scales? I like the idea of being able to take a knife apart to give it a thorough cleaning. And uh, the SE, I, Micarta and Blood, I, I know you can you know remove it, but I would prefer like something that seems a little more inert than Micarta. All right, let's piss some people off first. Start with the worst. This one with the tactical ribs and grooves for your hand's pleasure. It looks like a real operator knife, it is made in the USA, but the handle kills it for me. These are about 80 bucks, and you look really cool holding it, dude. The Gerber strong arm. The diamond grooves look great on your pickup bumper, your truck box, or I'm reaching a little here, but the floor of a service elevator. So they feel exactly like they look in your hands. 
maybe the knife was designed only for use with gloves, but generally, the busier the handle, the worse it feels in your hand, especially if you're using it vigorously. Rubberized by itself would have given a very good amount of friction to stay in your hand. But what about the glass breaker? Aren't those useful? Absolutely. For poking yourself while reaching for your knife. Now the survivalist here would be like, well, what about an emergency situation, asshole? Like I've seen in those classes on the YouTube. Now in an emergency situation, if you could hypothetically reach for your sheathed knife, your car door caved in as you're sinking in the cold, dark creek, sure. But the thought enters your head, what if I chipped my blade on this $80 Made in USA knife? I wish it had a specialized area to break glass with. Now if you're the kind of person who breaks glass often, there are better, more specialized tools than a pointy part on the back of your handle, which if we're being honest seems more of a way to injure yourself than to save your life. Now fortunately though, there'll be some opposing opinions on glass breakers in the comments, which if you read technically counts as doing research on how awesome and useful glass breakers are. I saw a few opinions under a YouTube video. Now the blade is stainless coated 420HC, high carbon stainless steel. Now it's rustable for sure, but it's not 1095 which spots when the tiniest amount of urine touches it or, or or water. A coated blade spine is also not the best for striking a ferro rod. While they're no glass breaker for usefulness, ferro rods are always a last resort for fire starting for me. But it still can produce a spark in the wet which if your fuel is wet would also be hard to start the fire. Hmm. Now you know what though? Once I started a Coleman stove in the rain by a ferro rod because my lighter was wet so I guess that counts as a win for ferro rods. Sheath is pretty good though. A lot of mounting options. I prefer it on a belt. You can do uh, upside down on your Kevlar vest for your tactical cosplay. All right, let's move on to the Buck 119. Four of my list out of, you know, five. The second worst, the second, you know, it's the, low, the second lowest ranked. Also 420 HC, but uncoated. Now, unlike Gerber, Buck trusts the user with 420 HC uncoated, and it was good enough for your grandpa until you stole it and left it out in the rain. And it broke his heart. He's dead now. I think you can get these in different steels, higher end steels on their limited editions too, if that's your thing. I did a video on this years ago, and for one of my older videos, it does very well. Now, Buck fans are a very serious, humorless lot about their brand attachment and often get upset about video games, millennials, tofu, and YouTube videos that don't treat their favorite knife with the respect they fucking deserve. My best comments are under my Buck videos. Those Buck nuts just dancing below the video with their opinions, swinging. This knife has a bulbous synthetic handle called, fuck, phenolic? Phenolic? P-H-E-N-O-L-I-C. This is actually, <laughs> and I probably misspelled it. This is actually a pretty decent knife and they're about 60 <laughs> bucks now. Oh, uh, pun intended. If I had to wager about these knives here, this to me feels like the best slicer of the bunch, you know? I'm sure it's popular with the buck hunters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have fun. Or or doe, or doe as long as you have your, your doe tag. When I was young, I went deer hunting a bunch and uh, even processed deer, but was never able to actually kill the deer I had to skin and cut. That's how life works. You'll get a few huge fans of this knife telling you in the comments that the handle is fine and nothing ever gets trapped down under it, and there's not a better hunting knife out there, and the phenolic doesn't crack or deform as it ages. Your mileage may vary. Remember that there are several parts to the handle. The, the tang, and then there's that butt cap on the end, so be aware, and no way to remove it other than splitting the handle. Not a full tang, but a good amount of tang. You can find pictures online of it. The sheath's okay, not super dangly. Leather with a plastic insert. Things that rank it a bit lower on my list are buck fans. The sheath could hang lower. The handle is comfortable, but kind of thick, and it has odd-looking proportions. Now, it's a perfectly functional knife, and some may rank at the top, and that's fine. That would be your list. Now, if you want a larger knife, you know, better for batoning. For a larger version of this, it'll uh, go to the 120. You know, the I think it's called the General, the Commander, the Admiral, I don't know. But the Buck 120 will set you back about $110. Check out my full review on this knife. Now, the SE Laser Strike. SE's warranty is legendary. They will replace the knife if it breaks for any reason, even a stupid reason. It's full tang, so it's a tad heavier than the buck. Then there's the carbon steel, which is why it's coated, because it's not a stainless steel like the bucks. Some people say carbon has a flavor when used on food or ah, human flesh, and some people don't like coatings on their blade. So that's a ding for the food prep on this. 
In all honesty though, the buck and this both have trade-offs, so if you're still mad about me ranking the buck lower, you can move it here if you want, you know, you're free to, in your, in your head mentally. This knife has an extremely comfortable handle, Makarta, with a hidden fire striker inside the handle if you get desperate, I guess. In all honesty, you should just pack a windproof, waterproof lighter before you pack your fixed blade, because you ain't gonna forget your knife. Now the SE ain't the cheapest here, which could be a ding against it, it's about 120 bucks. You know, if you think of it as you're paying for the warranty, maybe it makes you feel better. The sheath is great, and there are a lot of sheath mount options from SC, so you can mount it like an operator if you choose, dangle it, or whatever. You know, the little Kydex sheath is like your medium, and the canvas are all the different mounting options you can buy for it. Since I've had the kids, though, I car camp mostly and no longer backpack, so I choose the easy in and out of the pocket or belt clip, which mounts to the Kydex. I really like this system here. I know it's against my fixed blade in the pocket rules. You know, when I'm working around the campsite, I can just take it off and put it back in my pocket or whatever. Lay it down, you know. Now, I can't waste your time enough by saying the handle and even the choil is chamfered and comfortable. SE does very comfortable, removable, functional handles. Honestly, they're about my favorite. And then there's a lot of aftermarket options because they make them easy to swap out. Now, if you damage your handle on any of these other knives, you'd have to make a whole new handle for it and find a way to fix it. I don't know if you'd have to drill a hole in the tang, but you know, it's a whole process. Here, you just buy a new one or get a new one or whatever. I have a full review of this on YouTube. Okay, second best here, arguably the best if you figure in size or price or the liquor finally getting to work. In that case, you'd probably just be buying all of these. The Cold Steel SRK. Now this version uses an SK5 steel and costs about $35. Now I'm not trying to brag, but I paid about $32 for it about a year and a half ago on Amazon. Now there are versions with more expensive steels, like the $103 San Mai version. The steel here is carbon encoded. Good tactical sheath, secures the knife well. Made out of nylon and plastic, so it'll outlast you in the landfill. The sheath rides a touch higher than I'd like, but it's not too bad. The knife has been a cold steel staple since it was put out in I think 90 or 91 or so and very closely resembles the knife at the top of the list. This is the largest blade out of the bunch, more real estate on the spine, well balanced, nicer texture in the hands than the strong arm, no tacky diamond fucking grooves, and it's very sharp out of the box. And I do understand on the SRK handle there's some similar to the Gerber pickup toolbox texture here overall, but there's less needless grooves, no glass breakers, peaks and the diamond texture is finer so it does feel better in the hand than the Gerber. Okay, number one. It's hard to say which came first, the Cold Steel SRK or this guy. Seems like though the Felk even came a few years after if I'm looking at the the research and air quotes that I did, there was some Wikipedia articles and the Felk Nevens I think came out in 93 or 94, something like that. Now there are smaller Felk Nevens and there are larger ones. They're NL1 Bowie buoy is like 600 bucks and looks amazing. It's been on my list for a long time and I really like one of the big felt nevens but they're just too expensive and I only have room in my life right now for one $600 fixed blade and that's the Spear XXL. You know that by now. The S1 is pretty nice though. If you want a bigger go to the A1 or smaller go to the F1. I probably should have went with the A1 now that I think about it but no change in that now. Then there's the pro version with the nicer steel and then there's the full tangers. I think they're denoted by S's and X's. Your budget and drunkenness is the limit. This one has the not quite full tang, but still pretty close, you know, close enough. It's not gonna break. I would be worried about a rat tail or a cable tang, but these are these are pretty tall, so they're not gonna break. It's nimble in the hand, maybe a touch thinner of a handle, if that's your thing. And it's also pretty good looking. Felk Nevens are Swedish knives that as far as I can tell are made in Japan and are kind of expensive. It is unique in this lineup because it's laminated VG10 steel and it's full convex grind. Now while you can sharpen a convex ground knife like a standard knife and just add the bevel yourself, the, the edge bevel, you'll need to adjust your sharpening method and possibly freehand it or use an adapter for your sharpening system to maintain the curve of the convex. The sheath here is leather and dangly. Remember folks, leather sheaths retain and lock in moisture. The standard sheath here is, is a locking Zytel thing that is kind of hideous which is why I bought this version. And if you use it in the wet or store it in a damp environment, that's the best sheath for you, the Zytel, Zytel, Zytex, whatever, who cares? High impact plastic. Now, like I said, the steel here is stainless, but unless it's rust-free steel, and none of these knives here have rust-free steels, you know, and that depends upon their elemental makeup, they can rust, 
to varying degrees. I prefer leather sheaths personally, and this one's pretty great. I usually don't mind a little spotting on my blade. One day I'd like to get a bigger Felkneven, but it's just not in the cards for now so I probably never will. They're just expensive and probably a little too expensive for most people, and the trade-off is a slightly nicer hand feel and the convex grind. That's kind of what you're paying for here. You're not paying for the warranty, you're not paying for the tactical look, you're just paying for the, the hand feel, I think, and the, the steel. There are, there are better steels out there, though. Whatever. You know what? I take it all back. If you want to beat stuff up, buy the Cold Steel SRK. That'd probably be the best one for that. Cost to size to value ratio. And then the buck, if you want the best food prep or the game knife, because it has a hollow grind and, you know, a little bit better for slicing for that stuff. And don't look back. Or, okay, I can't stop myself. Maybe you're more the food prep person. The more a companion would be good at game dressing, finer slicing, and food prep. They don't give you the outdoor street cred, but it's 13 bucks. It's light. It's not full tang, because you don't need full tang for food prep. And if you'd like to size up just a hair, you could go with the Ontario SP1. It's made in the USA. It's got a comfortable handle. 40 bucks, it's full tang, a bit bigger than the largest, uh, which would be the SRK, and it's a little heavier too, more steel, and uh, one day I gotta get around to reviewing this one. Now if you like this sort of video, subscribe to the channel and think about becoming a patron, because uh, like these people here, they're helping me pay off for my upgraded camera and editing computer, although this video was shot a few months ago on the old camera, and I'm not gonna delete the footage just because it's gross 1080p, okay? Now follow me on Instagram if you're looking uh, to buy an eye for any of these, even the Gerber, you know? That one I don't regret ranking last. Buy them through the links below to help support the channel. Now like, comment, click that alert bell, buy a t-shirt. Thanks for watching.